Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1 equals x and we're going to be solving for f. In other words, we're going to find an expression for f of x in terms of x. I'll be presenting two methods, even though one of the methods will be incomplete. Alright, so let's go ahead and start with the first method. I have f of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 equals x. So my goal is to find an expression for f of x. So in order to be able to do that, I'm going to set this whole thing inside the parentheses equal to another variable. How about using something like t? Okay. So suppose x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 equals t. So my goal is to get something like f of t. Of course, this gives me f of t equals x. But eventually, I would like to write x in terms of t so that I can write my function in terms of t. And then, of course, I can always switch to another variable. Make sense? So wh whatever we find from here for x should give us t inside the parentheses. And we're definitely going to check that. But before we get into the solution, I just checked with from alpha if it can solve these kinds of problems you know the artificial intelligence the machine learning and so on and so forth all that hype and this is what i get from from alpha maybe my input or my prompt wasn't good you can try something else but i try to ask from alpha if you can find f of x where f of x plus the square root of x squared minus one is given as x and it just gave me the result as f of x, which is not kind of meaningless because we need to know what's on the right hand side. And also it gave me the derivative of this expression. I don't even know what that means. So couldn't solve the problem well, from alpha, unfortunately. So this is one of the shortcomings of this at this point. Anyways, let's see how we can proceed with the solution. So we got this part so far and we're going to go ahead and try to solve for x. So let me rewrite it here. x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 equals t. So my goal is again to find an expression for x in terms of t on the right hand side. And that can be done by solving for x, right? Because what I need is x right now. So let's go ahead and solve for x from this equation. To be able to do that, I'm going to subtract x. So write this as square root of x squared minus 1 equals t minus x. And then, obviously, when you have radicals, you want to get rid of them, don't you? Let's square both sides. We get x squared minus 1 equals t squared minus 2tx plus x squared. Now, this squaring might cause some issues because we have to be careful about the extraneous solution. That's why we want to check results at the end. But here, so far, we got this and x squared cancels out. Remember, our goal was to solve for x. So let's go ahead and put the 2tx on the left and bring the negative one over to the right. In other words, add 1 and add 2tx. Okay. Now we want to solve for x. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2t or not 2t. That's the problem, right? And we get the value of x. Now remember, when we replace the expression inside the parentheses, that this was the original problem. Let's go back and check our work, sort of. And we were trying to find an expression for f of x, but we're going to find f of t first. So we set this whole thing equal to t, and that gave us f of t equals x. But x is now written in terms of t, which is good. And now I can replace x with t squared plus 1 over 2t. And I forget about the x in the middle. I got something for f of t. So let's rewrite it. f of t equals t squared plus 1 divided by 2t. Of course, you can talk about the domain and range of this function. Obviously, t equals 0 is not allowed. What would that mean in the original functional equation? You know, you can talk about all those things. But that's what it is. And if you want to write... The result using x again this x is not the other x anymore because these are dummy variables we can just use them and discard them and use them again for different reasons and f of x can be expressed as x squared plus one all over 2x 
So that would be the solution. We were looking for an expression and we found it, right? But here's a million dollar question. Is this solution actually going to satisfy the original problem? And under what conditions? What is the domain? What is it going to look like? But one of the things before I get into that is to check a particular value. So in my original equation, which was f of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 equals x, I'd like to replace x with 1. Why? Because it's going to disappear. Uh, this is going to be a 0, so I'm going to get f of 1 plus 0, which is f of 1, equals 1. So in my solution, f of 1 is supposed to be 1. Obviously, this does not mean my solution is definitely correct, but at least it gives me a data point that I can use to check my work, right? And if you use more data points, obviously better. Now, replace x with 1 in this equation, f of 1 is going to be 1 plus 1 over 2, and as you can see, f of 1 equals 1 is verified. That's good. You can test something else. Obviously, f of 0 is not something you can find, but you can try other values. Something that would work here should probably work here too. But let's go ahead and look at the checking part. So, we got the f of x and we have the original equation, this one. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So, from f of x, how do you find this? So, let me rewrite it to explain what I'm talking about. Now, we're going to replace this x with x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. Obviously, you can replace x with x, 2x, x plus 1, y, whatever, anything. But you just got to have to do it on both sides. And when we do it here... We're going to get f of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. And on the right-hand side, replace x with that. You're going to get this squared plus 1 divided by 2 times that expression. Okay? And what am I supposed to get from here? I'm supposed to get x, right? Square the first expression, you're going to get x squared plus, if you square the radical, and then 2 times that, 2ab, and then plus 1 on the outside, divided by 2 times this. Let's leave it like that. Let's not distribute because we may be able to factor the numerator. Our negative 1 and positive 1 cancels out. We get x squared plus x squared, which is 2x squared. And then I can kind of write this as 2x squared plus 2x times the square root of x squared minus 1 all over 2 times x plus square root of x squared minus 1. And then now we're going to do the following. Factor out a 2x, and then we get x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 divided by 2 times x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. Do you see what I see? These two are going to cancel out. Twos are going to cancel out and we're going to end up with x. So our solution actually satisfies the original problem. The only problem is that x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 should not be 0, right? Now the question is then, what happens if this is 0? Well, it kind of implies the following. Square root of x squared minus 1 equals negative x. Square both sides. You're going to get x squared minus 1 equals x squared, which is impossible because, as you know, hopefully, negative 1 does not equal 0. So this is impossible. So it's automatically satisfied. And this should bring us to the end of the video. Thank, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.